tough to make out, but I do believe there are some prints on the window. If I had a forensics kit, I could make the prints visible with carbon powder. He's hiding something from me, and I have to find out what it is. What's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Professor Lucien? Yes? Oh, nothing. Well, uh, good. in front of the window in the archaeologist's compartment. The burglar might have lost it while climbing out the window, but there's no proof, my theory. Goodbye. We Swiss are crazy. We don't just It's not on the warpath anymore. For the next time. I've no idea. I've no idea what I'd say to Matt. violinist is uncooperative. I'm not authorized to search his belongings against his will and without a good reason, and he knows it. I have to come up with something. Matt says the violinist put something in his violin case on the platform. Seems suspicious somehow. The question is, how credible is a statement from an imaginative boy? The Baroness seems to have uh, a special personality. I better not bother her until I find her purse.
Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Professor Lucien is back in his compartment. I doubt he'll be leaving it anytime soon. Professor Lucien. Door is open. How can I help you, Constable Selma? I'd like to have a look around the compartment. Oh, uh, of course. Goodbye. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, but I imagine... Uh, Mrs. Miller? Yes? Thank you for your hairpin, Mrs. Miller. It really got me out of a jam. Oh, really? That's good to hear. And thank you for bringing it back to me. Not everybody would have. I'm a Swiss policeman, madam. I couldn't do otherwise even if I tried. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. There are thousands of things I would like to ask her, but nothing will justify neglecting my duties here on the train. the scissors here. Fin I made the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. I'd better let him read his newspaper if I don't have any pressing questions.
Inspector Legrand. Anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should. What? The light's gone out. Flashlights! Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's... it's a... Away with it! Take cover! Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Zellner. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde. Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? You have to uncouple the freight car, you understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. Uh, if anyone is watching this, um... We'll be back Tales. in a few minutes. Well, I'm supposed. Uh, sorry about the interruption. I'm gonna save the game really quick. Ah, fucking shit.
A lot was damaged by the sudden stop, but the bowl was thick enough to survive the fall. My god, what a fire. I hope Constable Oliver can at least reach the engine. I did not mean to scare you. What are you doing here, Doctor? Legrand asked me to check whether there are any passengers left on the train. Really? No one is here, except for me and you. Excellent. Then I will continue searching at the front. Did... Anyone act suspiciously before the explosion? Did anyone leave the seat, for example? I was the only one on the train who wasn't seated when the freight car exploded. Thank God. Otherwise, I would have been caught by the blast as well. You certainly were lucky. Perhaps I was. What happened over there? The inspector said something about gas canisters that exploded. He didn't want to scare you. The truth is, it was a bomb meant to kill him and the Bobby. My God. An attack? But who would... The investigations are ongoing, but first we have to get the burning train out of the tunnel. Oh, of course. How are the passengers? They are in a state of shock, of course. The blackout and the sudden stop were frightening enough, but then the explosion, the dust, everyone rushed for the exits. I was helping the American woman bring Lady Westmacott to safety. They are waiting outside in the tunnel. One entrance is blocked by a fire, and the other one seems to have collapsed. Continue to search the train. I'll decouple the buried freight car. All right. Doctor? Can you give me a few matches? Oh, certainly. Thanks. I'll meet you outside. Do hurry! I don't see Legrand or the constable, but I can make out the silhouettes of some of the passengers. They seem to be unscathed. All the same, the fire is getting bigger, and I don't have much time. A fine, but rather heavy curtain. The surface shimmers and feels smooth. Probably doesn't burn easily, like the tablecloths. Safety regulations require it, which, given the present situation, is actually a good thing. I noticed the extinguisher earlier. Doesn't match the decor. I suppose that the railway company had to comply with safety regulations at the cost of aesthetics. It'd be useless against the fire out there, and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best, I can use it here.
Carling Black Label, a British beer. No good. Insufficient alcohol content. For practical purposes, I mean, not for drinking. Whiskey, scotch, rum, liqueurs. Enough to entertain everyone on the train all the way from Paris to Istanbul. Whiskey, scotch. Hmm, <sighs> high proof rum. Could be useful. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol by volume. There's no way anyone would drink it straight. Rum from Austria. some matches, and half of the book to get the flame going. The chair either fell over thanks to the sudden stop, or an escaping passenger knocked it over. Warning to get off the train as quickly as possible after a sudden stop and a massive tremor, that's understandable. I should concentrate on uncoupling the freight car, I'm positive that Champagne, the finest. Maybe we'll open a bottle if we get out of the tunnel alive. Until then, though, it's no use to me. The last of the candy has vanished. Measured against the exploding freight car, I think the railway will overlook the loss. There's a pretty intense draft here. The fire is sucking up the oxygen. The coupling mechanism is down there, but I can hardly see a thing. I need some light. The inspector's trap failed. The thief must have got wind of it. Mm, worse than that, he turned the tables. To win a game of cat and mouse, you have to know who is the cat and who is the mouse. It's still quite warm and too warped to open. I think the noise could have come from the roof of the saloon car. The wheels came off the track during the explosion. Even if it were possible to pull the car out of the rubble, you wouldn't get far with it. Some matches, and half of the book to get the flame going. It'd be blown out right away. I'd better save the matches. A 
Hello? Hmm, nothing. I think the noise could have come from the roof of the saloon car. Must be good for something. It'd be useless against the fire out there, and it's too cumbersome to carry around. At best. I filled the bowl about a third of the way with rum. <laughs> Phew, strong stuff. I filled the bowl about a third of the way. <laughs> I filled the. That should do it. Can't really say the fabric was eager to soak up the rum. I, on the other hand, soaked up enough in my fingers to smell like a drunk. Rum from Austria. Believe it or not, it's 80% alcohol. A fine, but rather heavy curtain. Probably doesn't burn e It's not bothering me, I'll leave it there. I filled the bowl about <laughs> Hmm. Just as I expected, the alcohol burns with an almost invisible flame. The flame is hot, but it's no use as a light source. be good for something.
Let's go. It's taking too long. Time is running out. The flame is hot, but... The alcohol on the curtains will burn just as dimly as in the bowl. It's no good. It's taking too long. That'll get me something like a Molotov cocktail. I want light, but I don't want it to come from a wall of flames. Alcohol on the curtain burns just as darkly as in the bowl. It's no help. The flame is hot, but it's... It's taking too long. Hmm. That'll get me so I want l The flame is I expect the rum will burn like ethanol, but I better not test that theory in the bottle. It's taking too long. It's taking too long. The alcohol on the curtains will burn just... The flame is hot. The flame is... I broke the leg off a beautiful chair, and knowing the Swiss Federal Railways, they'll bill me for it. It's taking too long. Time is running out. The flame is hot, but it's... I should concentrate. The material won't be able to soak up any more alcohol. Mm. 
The alcohol burns with a dim blue flame. It doesn't shed enough light and will probably burn out in a few seconds. Won't solve my lack of light. I'll have to try something else. some matches and half of the book pills for my heart I'm The flame is hot, but it's no use as a light. A fine, but probably doesn't burn either. The flame is hot, but it's no I expect the rum will... It's taking too long. That'll get me something I want. The material won't be able to... The curtain is wrapped around the wood and doused in alcohol. I should be able to light the torch whenever I want. The flame is hot, but it's no use. The material won't. The alcohol on the curtain. That'll get me something like a Molotov cocktail. I want light, but I don't want it to come from a wall of flames.
damn it, what am I missing? Shit, you know what? I'm not gonna keep on with this, so... I didn't want to do this, but I'm gonna have to look up... Uh, how to do this, because I don't fucking know how, so... It's probably really simple. Uh, but... I can't fucking, and I don't know, I don't know what to do, so, yeah, I'm gonna look it up. Curtain, the torch. That's what we need. I'm sure I can uncouple the car if I only had enough light to see what I'm doing. There's a noticeable draft here. Maybe it's because of the fire, or perhaps there's still a hole through which the air is coming. The latter will be quite welcome. It will buy us some more time. I'm sure I could uncouple the... Coupling mechanism is down there.
the coupling mechanism. Okay, I'll smear some grease on the curtain. I can feel cold metal and a screw thread, and a lot of grease, but I can't do more without light. The grease from the coupling is all over the curtain. It'll never be clean again. I'm the god of fire. That's better now. A lever on a pressure sleeve running along a thread. Incredibly basic mechanism, the kind that lasts forever. Won't budge. Too much tension on the coupling. A lever on a pressure sleeve. Aha! I can uncouple it with this lever. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Time to get out of here. Listen, everybody! Listen! <laughs> Robert, what's the situation? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find the engineer, so I got in the driver's cab myself and released the brake. All right. Good job. You too. Listen, please! Matty! Where's Matt? Where's my son? Relax, madame. I'm sure... Uh Matt, where are you? Oh.
Matt, are you there? Nothing. makes things extremely complicated. The emergency brake either was damaged in the explosion or was sabotaged, but whatever, it's not working. I, I think I should try to uncouple the locomotive. I mean, how else can I stop the train? I suppose this handbag belongs to Miss Miller, Matt's mother. Lady West McCart's bag is probably smaller and more expensive. Aha! This is the table at which Lady West. Hey, there you are. What were you thinking? Bah, uh, come out of there. Is he gone? Is who gone? The man! What man? There was a man. He was coughing. One of the passengers? I think he came down from the roof. What are you doing on the train anyway? Why didn't you wait in the tunnel with the other passengers? I... I wanted to get my pistol. Your pistol? There's so many cops and thieves and explosions and everything. Then I need a pistol, too. Makes sense. All right. First, I'll stop the train, and then we'll have a chat, okay? You want to come out? Hmm. Good idea. You stay put. I presume the Baroness's luggage toppled over and is blocking the door. <laughs> Professor Lucien's suitcase. Unlike the leather bag, he left it behind when he fled the train with the other passengers. I don't think there's anything interesting in it. Whatever the professor is hiding from me, it's in his leather bag. My situation isn't that desperate. These compartments are like little hotel rooms. You could spend days or even weeks in here quite happily. Soft towel, very comfortable. I'll wrap it around my neck to keep my hands free. What have you got yourself into? Couldn't you have just let it be? But no, of course not. And now you're here, on an out-of-control train in the Alps, responsible for the life of a child who'll be doomed without you. What are you waiting for, eh? Time to save the day. Tanks don't seem to be damaged. The water is still running. If the doesn't work, I'll have to try something else. <sighs> Here goes. Ouch! Hot! This door leads to the tender. 
It will be uncomfortable, no doubt, but I don't think that the flames are directly behind the door. I suppose there's a relatively safe space in the lee of the tender where one could stay a little while. Locked. is already too hot to touch. Not very handy. On the other hand, one does need a certain heft to accomplish anything with an axe. An axe is for emergencies. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. They see out of the window because of the smoke. I don't know how much coal is burning on the tender up there, but it must be tons. I can't do anything about the fire. The handle is... Okay. We'll do it the hard way. outside with a towel around my head, it'll catch fire due to all the sparks flying around. I don't want to risk what little hair I have left. The handle is already too hot. If I go outside with a towel, I don't want to risk... Soaking up the cold water. <sighs> the towel is soaked, it's cold, it's heavy, and the water is slowly running down my back. I hope it's worth it. but it might be useful out here as well. Ah, the coupling. It looks just like the one on the freight car. That means at first I have to turn that thing there. That keeps it under tension. Ugh. It's not working. Even if I could reach the lever with my hands, I wouldn't have the strength to move it. because it's under too much tension. The 
Marks. Uncoupled the locomotive at full speed. Not bad, eh? Do you think we'll get in trouble? Because of the locomotive? I don't think so. It was pretty old already. Come out so we can have a chat. I checked the entire train. There's no one on it except for us. What an adventure. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what did you see on the train? <sighs> well, it was like this. I wanted to get my pistol. And then? When the guy was gone, I got up and banged on the window. I wanted to get out of there, but then I thought, what if the guy can hear me from the next car? So, I got scared, and I hit again. You did well. The envelope that the man lost, where is it? I thought it might be important. I think we should have a look. Hmm. Some cash. An Italian passport. Blank. Very interesting. And here, a ticket for... for... For the cruise! What? The tickets we have for the big ship from Venice to Cairo look exactly the same. Interesting. May I keep it? What do you want to do with it? Take a vacation. It's evidence. And my chance to go with you. The ticket and everything else in the envelope are part of my investigation. And you have no part to play in Cairo. If I hadn't given you the envelope, you'd have no proof that the Raven's heir would be on the ship. Ugh. The ship is his next chance to steal the eye. And he won't give up until he has it. And that's precisely why you should let me come along. No. What else did you find out in the tunnel? Not much. After we came out of the tunnel, Robert and I questioned the passengers. Which didn't turn up anything new? No. The engineer and the fireman were missing. They were found a few kilometers back on the track. Both claimed to have been overwhelmed by a shadow and thrown off the train. But you don't believe that. I'm checking their stories. One of them may have been paid to eliminate the other one. How could the Raven's heir have found out about the trap? How was he able to put the dynamite in the box and place the letter? The dynamite was probably already in the box when I put it in the safe. I didn't check it. You had no reason to do so. 
It wasn't my only mistake. I knew someone was on the roof of the freight car, but I let myself be distracted by that damned letter. How did you know? Too late. I should have reacted instantly. And what about the ship? I have earned the right to join you. <sighs> what you did was extraordinary. Far more than anyone could have a right to expect from you. And you still want to leave me behind? You met our foe and barely escaped with your life. You may not be that lucky next time. It wasn't luck. You can return to Switzerland with your head held high. Enjoy your triumph. I have not achieved anything yet. The Fiend tried to kill us, and he's still at large. We're here. Inspector Legrand, an urgent telegram from Paris. Bad news? It's about the unfortunate events on the train. I'm to return to Paris and explain myself. But sir, what about the eye? They want to inform the Egyptian authorities that there might be a burglary attempt. Might? Egyptian authorities? What if the jewel is stolen at sea? I know, I know. I never received it. Keep a close watch on the loading of the eye, Robert. Aye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zelda. I hope you're aware of the fact that you're risking your career. Indeed I am. Why do you care so much about this case? Someone pretends to be the Raven, and you promptly risk your career? What if he's not just pretending? What do you mean by that? It's his handwriting. And there's only one person who ever called me Nico. Have you ever considered the possibility that I shot the wrong man? And the second eye is in that safe? Yes, an emerald. It's been kept in a bank in Zurich since the start of the war. I personally took it out of the bank vault and Professor Lucien certified that it was the real thing. And while a fake jewel was sent by train... The real one was brought here in an armored car. How is it protected? You can only open the safe if you have three special keys. Professor Lucien has one, and Baroness Van Trebitz, who's paying for all this, has the second. The third was sent by air courier to Dr. Abbas Mokhtar, the director of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So, not even you could possibly open the safe before it arrives in Egypt. That's correct. We don't want to make it too easy for potential thieves. Commendable. You think it's really possible that you didn't get the Raven back then? Let us assume, just for a moment, that the person I shot and who fell from the roof was not the Raven. Who would have cared enough to uncover the truth? The chief of police, the politicians? No, they wanted to revel in a successful manhunt. And it was the best thing that could have happened to the Raven. The search for him was over. <laughs> he had no reason to fear me anymore. I had so many medals afterwards that he could hear them jingling kilometers away. And now he's back? And you're the only one who can stop him? Does that sound probable to you? The feathers, the letters, Nico. No one outside the police force knew that the Raven used to call me that in his letters. Policemen gossip, and there are plenty of forgers. You can't seriously intend to stake your reputation on such weak evidence. My reputation rests on something that I probably did not do. I have to find out who's behind all this. Why does Constable Oliver have a problem with me? I think he's jealous. 
Scotland Yard assigned him to assist me, just as you were sent by the Swiss authorities. Uh, with the distinction that he may go to Egypt. Robert is to accompany me at all times. Your mission was restricted to Switzerland. At this moment, I want to be sent back to Switzerland just as much as you want to be sent back to Paris. I know, but I'm walking on thin ice, and I can't carry you too. Let's review. One of the two most valuable jewels in the world was stolen. Obviously, the second one will be next, and you suspect a legendary burglar who's been dead for five years. Go on. The second jewel is about to be put on board over there, in a safe that requires three keys. Our thief may already have the first key, the archaeologist's key, from the train. We don't know anything about the status of the second key, which was meant to be air freighted to Cairo. We have to assume that he already has it. Therefore, there's just one key left. The Baroness's. Correct. So, you'll need my eyes on board. Look, you can keep your eyes open for me here on the wharf. I'd be most grateful. But when this ship sets sail, you will not, I repeat, not be on board. But, Inspector... We're dealing with a dangerous man. And I will pursue him regardless of the consequences. I won't let you get mixed up in this affair. It's still my decision. No, it's not. It's mine. And I've already made it. Good day, Constable Zellner. I might have considered abseiling from the crane down to the ship, but those days are long past. Fine car, but nothing compared to the young lady who owns it. Who could she be? An actress? A millionaire's daughter? She's certainly attracting a lot of attention. Amazing how much luggage there is for so few passengers. And I'd guess that three quarters of it belongs to the women. I'll take an inconspicuous look up close. I wasn't expecting anyone to be crawling around on the ground in front of my door. Don't worry about it, miss. No harm done. Uh, that's good to hear, Mr... Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. May I ask your name? Patricia Mayers. Are you American? I am. Um, could you help me, please? Uh, Certainly. Are you on your way to Egypt? Yes. Are you on holiday? My father works for a railroad company there. And is rebuilding the country after the war. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. One more.
You're lucky to have a father who takes you to so many interesting places. Oh, yes. Lucky me. Aren't you interested in Egypt? The pyramids? The history? I would have been more interested in a father who doesn't travel 300 days a year. <laughs> I'm sure your father regrets that he can't always be with you. No doubt. And I'm sure he always wanted the best for me. But that doesn't stop him from thinking only about himself far too often. Bring my luggage on board, please. Excuse me? It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. Impertinent. I'll be marching up this gangway today, no matter what. Someone has to stop that damn bomber before he endangers more people. I'll be marching... Someone... The sea is quiet today. Ideal conditions for a cruise. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to see the sights in Venice. Paperwork served up by my Italian colleagues took up most of the day. Constable Oliver seems to be a little... simplistic. But I don't think he's a bad policeman. The way he reacted in the tunnel and got the train moving. Hats off. Hello, Constable Olivier. It's Oliver. I just wanted to say that you did a good job in the tunnel. Hmm, thanks. How did you know how to get the train moving? I come from a family of miners, and my uncle is an engine driver down the mine. I see. And you looked over his shoulder? Yeah. Best way to learn. Did Legrand tell you about his theory? That it could be the real Raven? Of course he did. We're partners. But the modus operandi doesn't fit at all. The Raven wasn't a bomber. We have the letter. And the feather. That's his symbol. Anyone can put a feather in an envelope. You would know. What's that supposed to mean? It was you. What was me? You put the envelope on the safe. To blow myself up? You threw the bomb away, and now you're the famous hero, right? And the Raven must have paid you pretty well. That is ridiculous. Is it? Only you and I and Legrand were in the freight car. One of us must have put the envelope on the safe. Legrand didn't. And I didn't think about it. <laughs> Is the doctor afraid to board the ship? Hmm. Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Ah, the hero of the hour. The hero of the hour, but out of work soon. Oh, 
You won't be a policeman anymore? Yes, but on my old beat, which is almost as good as being out of work. <laughs> I understand. Is your new job bothering you? On the contrary. I wasn't sure whether I made the right decision until now. I'm from the Black Forest, you know. There are only mountains there. <laughs> no ships. But now... <sighs> the salty breeze. The atmosphere. I think I want to stay at sea forever. The sea is one thing. The passengers are another. <laughs> it will be okay. Have you already met the captain? Mario Di Conti. Heard of him? Should I have? He is something of a star in Italy. A war hero. In the First World War, when he was a young man, he sank more enemy ships than anyone else. In the Second World War, well, he had some... Yeah personal problems. You mean, like the ones you buy in bottles and pillboxes? Mm. Yeah, you could say that. Anyway, sending him into combat was out of the question. They gave him a supply ship instead, and he became a hero again. His ship, part of a convoy from Palermo to North Africa, was the only one that made it, with an extra 100 seamen who he rescued from the other ships. Impressive. To say his health is rather shaky these days would be an understatement. I think most of my time on board will be spent dealing with his numerous ailments. What do you know about the Baroness? Mm, nothing really. Did you talk to her in the tunnel? No. Her butler was looking after her, and I was busy with Miss Miller. As you can imagine, it was a shock for her to see her son rolling away on a burning train. That's understandable. So, we were all glad when we heard about your brave deed. Well, there's nothing left for me to do but to wish you a good trip. Oh, you are not coming with us? Unfortunately, no. I'm to go back to Zurich. What a pity. Take care, Dr. Gebhardt. Oh, I just remembered we found these in the tunnel. Are they yours? I'm afraid so. Strophantine. Do you have heart problems? Maybe it's for the best that you're not coming along. Too much excitement could be bad for your health. You mean, if I don't do anything, I'll probably have a few more years to live? That's right. Keep your chin up. I bought it last week, second-hand. I like it because it tells a story. I guess its previous owner replaced... I don't want to run into Legrand before I have something new to report, otherwise he'll send me back to shore. James! James! Where on earth are you? Hello, Baroness. Ah, Inspector. Constable. Poppycock. You won't be a constable much longer. When they find out how you rescued that little boy, they'll have to promote you to inspector. Very kind of you to say so, Baroness. I hope you survived the adventure in the tunnel unharmed. Scandalous! 
you book a first-class cabin, and then you're walking on the rails. <laughs> they wanted to bundle me off in a bus without my luggage. The circumstances, madam. I insisted on a limousine and didn't leave until all my luggage was recovered. Did you know that the real Eye of the Sphinx wasn't even on the train? I had no idea. Inspector Legras seems to prefer to keep me in the dark, although I'm the one paying for all of this. The Inspector is ensuring the safety of the Eye. Well, obviously. All the same, it was you who did the real work on the train. I hope that the remainder of your trip to Cairo will be less stressful. You aren't coming with us. I'm afraid Inspector Legrand doesn't want my company. Now, where's my damned butler? James, there you are. Is the Inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? Uh, well, actually... Baroness? Baroness? Can you hear me? She fainted. No. No. Baroness? Again. Harder. Hello. Can you hear me? I... Help me up. Uh, perhaps we should... Now. I'll get Dr. Gebhardt. No. No, no, Doctor. Just a little moment of weakness. Your arm, James. Take me to the ship. But of course, madam. That was no moment of weakness? She saw something that shocked her. Or someone. Very interesting. Especially since she doesn't want to admit it. Who or what did she see? Neither of them seems to have noticed what happened down here. <laughs> You'll have a tough time with her. How does one get aboard without a ticket? Hmm. Not brilliant, but it's a possibility.